It's been a while since I filmed a call shift and I'm on call today from 3 p.m. till 7 a.m. tomorrow. So I decided I'm gonna film this call shift for you guys, tell you about what I'm doing. I have a feeling it's gonna be an exciting one because it's Monday. Mondays are always busy. This morning I had a test at school, but other than that, I have just been at home getting ready for my call shift. So I'm gonna head inside right now. I'm parked in the parking garage. I usually park outside and take a walk, but it is cold and I'm not into it. And I know when I get off in the morning, I'm not gonna to wanna to be outside. So let's head inside and see what we have going on for the rest of the evening. Hey, I am here, I'm changed, and I'm gonna go see what's going on and try and fix my hair because it's getting a little crazy already. I am currently on my dinner break and I'm having a burrito from Sweet Earth, which I love their burritos, so I'm glad I brought that. I didn't really wanna make anything today, so I just packed that in my lunchbox with some other snacks. It's a very processed dinner because I was in a rush, but it's on the healthier end, I think. Anyway, I don't really care because I'm starving. I just got out of a case. It's about 7 p.m. I've been in the same case since I got here and that was an exploratory laparotomy, which I'm gonna to explain to you after I finish the case because I have to go back in there and I only have a limited amount of time to eat. But I wanna tell you guys all about that. It has been a good night so far. We haven't had any calls to the floor. I have a pager and I'm also in a case, but I'm in the case with CRNA. So if we get a call to the floor, I'll probably leave the case, go to the call with the other CRNA and then come back. One of the good things about being on call is that as a student, you're the only one here. So you get to do everything and everything you're interested in and you get to be involved in everything. So it's really awesome. I'm gonna eat before my food gets cold and I'll catch up with you guys after dinner. I am done with my cases for the night, so far anyway. Let me knock on wood here because it, the night isn't over yet, but it's 11 and I finished that exploratory laparotomy and then I also got to do another case. So we've done a total of three cases all together tonight. I don't think I told you about the first one, but the first one was just a quick wound debridement then the exploratory laparotomy, and then just another little short case. So I wanted to talk to you some more about the exploratory laparotomy and just tell you a little bit about it because abdominal cases can be really complicated and we also do them a lot. They're very frequent cases that come in as emergencies during off hours and even during the day. So basically an exploratory laparotomy is when they open up the abdomen looking for something, exploratory, hence the term, and they're trying to find it and fix it. So this can be anything from like a bowel obstruction to an abscess to anything like that. So we did an exploratory laparotomy. A patient came in from the ER with abdominal pain and sometimes they start by doing an ex a laparoscopic exploratory procedure and then they convert to open when they find what's wrong if they can't fix it laparoscopically. So we always do these as a general anesthetic because it's an abdominal surgery, the patient needs to be relaxed with muscle relaxant. So induction for this general anesthetic will typically include an RSI, a rapid sequence intubation, because patients that come in as emergencies typically have eaten in the past eight hours. We'll use succinylcholine, do an RSI, we'll usually do induction with propofol or Tomidate, depending on their blood pressure and stability, lidocaine, fentanyl, and succinylcholine. And then we'll use a longer acting muscle relaxant after that, like Zemuron or Cisatricurium, depending on the case. For this case, we're gonna want two large bore IVs, 18 gauge or below, so 18, 16, 14. The numbers go down as the gauge gets bigger. And if we cannot get a peripheral access that's good enough, we'll go ahead and put it in central line after induction, or maybe that could be done before induction if the patient's very unstable. We're gonna get an arterial line so that we can monitor hemodynamics very closely and so we can also send labs frequently. If the patient does not already have a type in screen, we would go ahead and do that and match them for blood in case they needed blood during the procedure. We would also insert an OG tube an orogastric tube so that we can decompress their stomach and also sometimes after big abdominal procedures the surgeon wants them left in so we may even enter a nasogastric tube depending on the surgeon's preference and if they're going to leave that tube in post-op. And another big thing with these abdominal cases is antibiotics because you are working on the bowels and things like that so antibiotic timing is important with any kind of case but during an abdominal case we usually use mefoxin or cefoxitin. Cases like this can last anywhere from one hour to four or five hours depending and what they find so you have to be flexible be ready to keep going or be ready to wake the patient up if you need to 
and they can either wake up and be extubated depending on how they're doing or they can go to SICU or some kind of recovery unit intubated. So it really just depends. This particular patient got extubated but also still went to SICU. We always call the ICU and give a report from the OR so that they know what's coming up to them and what to expect and what to set up for the patient. I probably give them too much information but that's about it for an exploratory laparotomy. I mean that's really not about it. There's a ton that goes into it but that's kind of like a general description that's not too detailed for people who are not in anesthesia school and so you can kind of understand what's going on. Now I'm going to try to get some sleep so I will let you know what I end up doing the rest of the night and hopefully I can fall asleep now. Do you like my hair? So far I've had two hours of sleep and one floor intubation so it's been successful and I just got back and now I am going back to sleep. It's four and I just got a call for a case so I'm gonna go set up for up that now. Set up for that now. All right, it is 7 a.m. and I'm headed home. So usually I start IVs in the morning at 6 a.m., but I was in that case until 7 until another sRNA and CRNA came and relieved us. So I just got out since they just got here. Now I'm walking to my car and it's very cold outside, but I'm excited to go home, see John and B, and just have the rest of the day to chill. I actually do have to do a bit of studying. So I'll show you guys what I'm working on and it's just board prep. It's gonna be a pretty good day. I have some errands to run and I'll take you along. I had to make a little pit stop. I'm actually at Starbucks because they just built one next to the hospital. And B kept John up forever <laughs> last night. She was sending me videos of her hysterically laughing at four in the morning and running around in the bed because he took her out of the cribs and she was awake. So I'm gonna get him an iced coffee so that he can have some energy today because he does have some work to do and go check on some houses and things like that. I got him a white no vanilla latte and i got it hot but i'm gonna put it on ice for him when we get home which i don't know why i did it like that i should just ask for it iced but it is delicious i actually just took a sip of it it's a vanilla latte with coconut milk like not dairy obviously and it is so good i never get drinks like that because i don't drink coffee or caffeine really that much but this is delicious and i just took a sip of it and now i wish i got one but I'm glad I didn't get one because I don't think I need that much caffeine. But as you can tell, I'm a little bit delusional. I did sleep for like almost five hours, which is actually very good for a call shift, but I'm always out of it. I don't sleep well there because I just always hear things through the walls and I'm like worried that I'm missing something. So just wanted to update you guys on what I got and how good it was. And that's about it. I'm just rambling at this point. So I'll see you when we get home, bye midday update because it's the midday now it's about 12 and it's really gloomy outside so i'm using my light and it's like so dark but it was a good time to sleep so i actually came home and took a nap because i was still really tired after like not sleeping well all night and being up late and getting up early so i came home and took a nap for about two hours well i didn't go to sleep right away but i took a nap and then i went to the gym and did my workout so i won't have to go tonight and i also wanted to go while i still had motivation and now i'm getting ready to study so i'm gonna show you guys what i'm working on because it's neonatal anesthesia and I'm working on that module in our board prep right now so let's go look at that. As I said today I'm working on neonatal anesthesia and that includes anatomy and physiology emergencies and congenital heart disease so I'm going to try to get through all these modules today. I won't be able to finish all the associated workbooks today because I like to take my time with those but I'm going to start with the emergencies one because I already did the anatomy and physiology one. I just want to review it a little. These are required for my class in school. It starts off with a question and then I'm just picking a random one. I'm not even reading the question. You go on and, oh, I got the question right. Okay, you go on and then it gives you a whole lesson about it. And it tells you all the stuff you would need to know to answer the question and even more. So it's really interesting. And then at the end, there's a test. So after I finish the workbook, I always take the practice test and this workbook actually is pretty short, so I'll be able to finish this one in about an hour or less, and then I'll take the practice test. So that's what I'll be doing, try to get through these last two neonatal workbooks and go back over the first one and take the practice test for the first one. I'm making him love me. All right, you guys, there's probably dog hair on my lips now, but study time is over. It's almost five o'clock, and I'm so excited. I'm waiting for John and B to get home so we can all hang out and have dinner and go for a walk and do some fun stuff, so. 
just waiting. I'm done studying. I put all my stuff away. I won't study anymore tonight because I studied so much this afternoon so that I wouldn't have to tonight. I do have to pre-plan tonight because I have clinical tomorrow. So I had a call shift that I have the next day off, but I do have clinical tomorrow, which is the day after that. I do have to pre-plan for that. I'll probably actually do that a little later, like at eight or nine o'clock after she goes to bed. But I just wanted to close out this video and say thank you so much for watching. I hope you enjoyed watching my call shift and my post-call shift routine. So it's usually the same just about every time. I try to go to the gym a little early before I get tired. Even though I took a nap and then I try to get some studying in during the day so that at night I can kind of just relax. And I'll film some more call shifts for you if you're interested and you like to see them. I can talk about some other stuff if you're interested in that. So just let me know. As always, I hope you guys have an amazing week and I will see you next week. Mm -hmm.